Hey, welcome back to Turdford 67 on YouTube. Uh, what we've got in front of us today is an empirical formula problem that we've been asked to try and work. An empirical formula problem is a, a kind of a common thing in chemistry. You work these usually right after, right after you learn how to start doing molar conversions and working with moles is usually about the time you start doing molar con, uh, uh, these. The, I, Bid. Okay, I'm ready. These type of problems. So it's basically these problems are how do we get formulas? How do we know that magnesium oxide is magnesium oxide? This kind of stuff. And so I've got some notes up here in front of you and you can pause the video for a second and take down there. Right here. Pause. Click. Oh, I should move my hand if you're pausing. it. Okay, so hopefully you've got everything copied down that you need to have copied down off these notes here. So there's two types of formulas. There's molecular formulas and empirical formulas. An empirical formula is nothing but a ratio. In other words, all it lets you know is a ratio of atoms in something. A molecular formula, on the other hand, actually tells you what something is. That's what it boils down to. So let's just, instead of trying to explain this, let's just go on and do the problems. Doing the problems are easy. And I'm going to do this problem number one. And once again, you can pause. And we're back. All right, so we're going to work number one. So here's how you work it. I want you to kind of pretend you're working in a chemistry lab or something like that. And what somebody has done here is they've brought you, let's just say, this thing of white powder. And so you're going to analyze this powder. And so you break down this powder and you analyze it in the chem lab. And you come back and you have determined that this white mystery powder contains 13.5 grams of calcium. And then it's got, now I want you to watch how I write all this out. It's got 13 and a half grams of calcium. And it says it's got 0. 0.675 grams of hydrogen. And then it says that you've got 10.8 grams of oxygen in this problem. So there's a problem. These problems have only got three steps to them, as you saw in the notes I had you copy down. And I love it. The problems have three steps. Now I can make it really easy. Step number one, convert to moles. This is my simplified three steps. Convert to moles. Step number two, <laughs> divide by the smallest. And then step number three, I love this one, round. So there's my three steps in working these problems. So now I'm going to see if I can't actually do this. So first step, I've wrote down everything. Now I'm going to convert every one of these to moles. So I'm going to draw my line, put my X in, draw my line. If you don't know how to convert to moles, you're going to have to watch a video on how to convert to moles. So in the case of carbon, I know that carbon weighs... 40.0, and I'm going to use three sig figs, because this is kind of the only problem we'll do this year where the sig figs really do make a difference. So I'm going to write 40.0 grams of calcium per one mole of calcium, and I'm going to go ahead and put an equal sign. I'm going to go on down the list and get all these ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Hydrogen. Now, right off the bat, hydrogen should look wrong to you because you you can tell. I didn't write H2, and normally I'm always scrapping. Hey, make sure you, with hydrogen you write H2. This is the only problem I will probably ask you to do this year where we don't write H2, where we don't write O2. We're just looking at the atoms in the case of this problem. So, anyway, so let's go back through and kind of take a look at this a little bit. So hydrogen, on the other hand, hydrogen weighs 1.06, I'm trying to remember exactly, 1.00694 or something like that. So hydrogen weighs, um, let's see if we can round off, 1.01, 1.01 grams of hydrogen per one mole of hydrogen. So there we go. We got that one rounded off. And we've got that one. Though. We still need to do auctions. I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to put my X. And I'm going to draw my line on this one. Auction weighs 15.99994. So we'll round that to 16.0. And again, this is one of those problems that's really due. 16.0 grams of oxygen for one mole 
of oxygen. Again, if you're trying to do this and you don't know how to convert moles yet, then you've already got a problem. Anyway, here's our first step in this. So I'm going to go through and let's see if we can't calculate each one of these. Get out my Casio here. See if I can get out from underneath that light that always blinds my calculator. 13.5 divided by 40. So that'd be 0.338 moles of calcium. And if you're going to come back at this point, let's see. Let's do the next one. Hydrogen would be 0.675 divided by 1.01. .01. I got 0.668 moles of <coughs> hydrogen. I'm sorry about my coughing. I cannot help it. And then the last one, let's see if I can get my calculator back on the screen. 10.8 divided by 16.675 moles of oxygen. So here's where we've got started at this point. So step number one is complete. Step number one being convert to moles. Step number two. Divide by the smallest number. So look down this list, 338, 668, 675. The smallest number is 338. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and divide every one of these moles by 0 0.338. 338 and divided by 0 0.338 down here on the last one. Now when I divide this out, the first one is going to be easy, 0.338 divided by 0.338. That one's going to be 1.00. So we've got that. Now we need to do this next one. 0.668 divided by 0.338. 1.98. Notice how I'm keeping three sig figs this whole time. And it's going to help me when I go around. I need to do this one last one. 0.675 divided by 0.338. And that's 1.997, which ends up rounding all the way to 2. Oh, oh. So, step number one, convert to moles. Step number two, divide by the smallest out of all these moles. And then step three says to round. So let's see if we can round these numbers off. So CA is one, 1.98 is two, 2.00 oh, rounds to two. So the answer to my problem is this. Now I want you to watch how I write this. CA one, my H's are 2, and my O's are also 2. Now, maybe you have a very kind teacher and it would let you get away with that. But, I mean, that looks hideous to write that. There's no such thing as CaH2O2. So a white powder of calcium hydrogen peroxide? I mean, this. first of all, don't write the one there. So if you're going to screw up, your screw up shouldn't be any worse than this. You ought to know by now that when you see CA, that represents one. So let's let's get rid of that guy. Second though, now your teacher might be really sweet and let you write that for an answer. They might though want you to look at this and try and figure out what is this compound. Calcium and you see two, you see an O and an H and a two. What is this in real life? And this is where, having done chemistry, you've got to figure this out. And again, it depends on your teacher. They might let you have this right. If you look at it, it looks a lot like calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, OH, 2, and sure enough, that means this pile of unknown white substance I've got is calcium hydroxide. And this is what is known as my empirical formula. All right, now, sometimes a problem is going to ask you to take it a step farther than this. Really, an empirical formula, all that tells us is that there's twice as much hydrogen as calcium and twice as much oxygen in this. But this is the empirical formula. Now, let's do what's known as a molecular formula. Well, here's the neat thing. To do a molecular formula, you got to be able to do an empirical formula. So there's really no sense learning a whole bunch of extra stuff. The next problem I work, I'm going to work this exact same way. So let's get that one out and give it a try. So I'm going to lay this back down, and if you get a chance, copy number two. Go. All right. 
So if you're done with number two, the first thing you're going to see that the textbook's done to try and confuse us, they've thrown in these percentages in here. 40% carbon, 6.67% hydrogen, 53.3% oxygen. Oh, come on, Mr. Cole. Look, a second ago, now this one gave us grams. <coughs> now that was very polite. Sorry, I'm getting a cold here. I'll take a drink of uh, coffee. Try and... Mmm, that's refreshing. All right. The first thing you can see, though, last time it gave us grams. This time it gave us these percents. It's like, what are we going to do? All I'm going to do is pretend I got 100 grams, which means instead of 40% carbon, I want you to look what I'm going to do with my paper. I'm not going to get alarmed over it. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to write 40.0 grams of carbon. Draw my line, put my X, draw my line. All I'm going to do is change those percents to grams. The problem also says it's 6.67% hydrogen, so I'm just going to write 6.67 grams of hydrogen now. I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to put my X. I'm going to draw my another line because I'm going to convert. Every one of these has got to be converted to moles. That's step one. And then it says it's 53.3%. I think it's oxygen. So we'll draw his line, put our X in, draw our line. Y'all, we're right back in the game again. Convert each one of these down through here. Well, if we go through and start doing this, carbon weighs 12.0 grams per one mole. Hydrogen, we just did this a second ago. It's 1.01 grams of hydrogen per one mole. Oxygen would be 16.0 grams of oxygen for one mole. I'm going to put me an equal sign on each one of those. All right, and let's go back through and start doing some calculations now on all these. All right, so number one, 40 divided by 12, 3.33, okay? So there's 3.33 moles of carbon in the first one. Next one, 6.67 divided by 1.01. 6.60 moles of hydrogen and then the next one 53.3 divided by 16 3.33 oh look at that 3.33 again moles of oxygen so now now that we've done this step two let's go back and divide each one of these by the smallest well it's obvious that 3.33 is the smallest so i'm going to divide him by 3.33 you and you as well, kind sir, all by 3.33. Well, this is very nice. That makes this 1.00. This one down here would also be 1.00. So the only one we need to divide is the middle one. And we can see it's going to be right at 2 already. 6.60, if I can get this on the screen, divided by 1, oop, I'm not messing up, 6.60 divided by 3.33. 1.98. One point nine eight on this one. Well, we go to round beautiful. One, two, and one. Now I do want to take a moment to say something. What are you gonna do if these problems don't round off nice and neat? That's right. Sometimes they don't round off super nice and super neat for you. So what in the world are we gonna do? Hold on a second. I'm gonna don't don't lose this. Don't lose that. I'm just gonna set it like right here beside you. So don't worry. I'm just gonna grab a scratch sheet of paper here for a second. What would you do if your answer came out to like one of them's always gonna be 1.00? What if your numbers came out like 1.00, 1.49, and 2.00? What if that was your numbers? You, if you take a look, here's the thing. I only want to round down if it's like a very small number. Or maybe if it's like a 1.8, I might round up. But this this does not round off nice and tidy like. All I need to ask though is this. What could I do? This is the only trick. What could I do if they don't round off? Just times by something to make them round off. If you got 1.49 times that by 2, and now all of a sudden you got 2.98, which does round off. That would round to three. Now, it's just like most things in math class, though. If you times this by two in order to make it round, then you need to go back and times that by two, and you'll have four times that one by two, 
and that would be two. And again, that's the only trick to these. Ooh, what if you got one that was 1.33? What would you do to make it round off? Easy. Times it by three, and now you got 3.99, which rounds to a four. But if you times one of them by three, you got to times them all. All right, so that's just a little moment on what to do when they don't round off like you want them to. So let's get back to this one. This one was lovely. By the way, most of them usually always round off for you. This one's great. One, 1 1.98. These all round off. So my answer is, here's my answer. C, H, 2, O. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to put a box around this. This is an empirical formula. So that's an empirical formula. Reality of it is, it just tells me that something has got twice as much hydrogen as it does carbon and oxygen. Y'all, there a, are a tremendous, permit me to say crap load us, of times where you have this same empirical formula in chemistry. So what this problem does, it adds one extra thing. So a molecular formula question throws in one little bonus thing. It tells you how much your compound should weigh. This problem says my answer should weigh 150. My answer should weigh 150. So it's saying that should weigh 150. Well, let's take a look. Does this weigh 150? Carbon is 12 times 1 is 12. Hydrogen is 1 times 2 is 2. Oxygen is 16 times 1. Oh, I'm working this out so lovely. And if we add all that up, it's 30. Oh, shiskadoodle. What's going on? I've got 30, but it says my answer should weigh 150. Do you notice anything about the two numbers? I got 30. It says the answer is 150. 150 divided by 30. I'm off by a power of 5, which means... You ready for this? Do you see this? 150 divided by 30, it's 5. It means my answer should be C5, H10, O5. That is my real deal, holy field answer right there. And I'm going to call that one the molecular formula. Now, in the world of trickiness... What are you going to do if you work this out? And, and what, what would you have done if the problem said, hey, this should weigh 30, and you got 30? What is that telling you if you work one out and the answer you get is the answer it's supposed to be? Then, you, then the empirical formula is the same thing as the molecular formula. So if you get this weight and it weighs exactly what it's supposed to weigh, just copy the same answer down twice. And that's how you do a molecular formula question. All right, I think I've exhausted everything in this 18-minute video. Love you. Don't forget to go buy Expo markers. Oops, I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm just filling in time. Y'all have a great day.